Labor's Linda Burney is the incoming Minister for Indigenous Affairs. Congratulations on your re-election firstly, and then secondly, as a Wiradjuri woman, congratulations on shortly becoming Australia's first female Indigenous Minister for Indigenous Australians. Well, thanks so much, Lee. It means a lot to the community, a lot to my family, and I am slightly daunted, I have to tell you. <laughs> I'm sure you will do a sterling job. In the last term of Parliament, you worked Thank very you. hard with Ken Wyatt, your coalition counterpart in the portfolio, to see if you could work towards things such as closing the gap and advancing the goals of the Uluru Statement. Where are things up to? What is your starting point now as Minister? Well, there are a number of things that really need to happen. Um, by the way, I got the most gracious text from Ken on Sunday morning and that was really lovely of him to send his best best wishes and saying that I would be awesome in terms of leading our people. So um, that was very nice. Uh, the Uluru Statement is something that Labor has been in the process of looking at and has embraced for the last year or two. In fact, in the plan we've got for Labor's commitments to First Nations people, Anthony's message expressly talks about our support for Uluru, its generosity, its compassion, and its uh, very, very simple request. Uh, what's going to be really importantly is building a consensus amongst First Nations people, uh, amongst the people that have been carrying on the Uluru Dialogue for five years. Can you believe this week is the fifth anniversary of Uluru um, and also, of course, the broader Australian community? If we are going to have to have a referendum, and we will, that needs to be support right across the community. And finally, I will make um, another plea to the opposition to come on this journey and have bipartisan support for a referendum. Well, so when, it's really about building consensus. Well, when you look at who's now in Parliament in this term on the other side, and, and as you mentioned, Ken Wyatt lost his seat, do you feel that you have some allies who will assist you in building that bipartisan support? I believe there are allies, and I know that a number of the independents that have been elected uh, last Saturday have expressly said that they support the Uluru Statement. And certainly the independents that I served with in the last parliament were very supportive. Uh, there will be six First Nations people, Lee, in the Labor Party caucus when we, re when we, re when we return to Canberra, which is just amazing. Um, and I do believe that there will be a bipartisan support because if there is not, Labor is not going to wait. And I don't believe the opposition, given uh, where they're at now, would want to be relics of history. So do you have a timeline in mind for when you would like to hold a referendum? Uh, no, I don't have a firm timeline. The Uluru Dialogue uh, people whom I'm meeting with very shortly, within the next few days, um, as you know, have put out um, two possible dates and they are, of course, going to be closely considered. We need to also look at the 10 years of work that's already been done on, uh, on constitutional recognition. That's important. We need to look at the work that Ken White has done in terms of uh, a legislative voice to the parliament and what the structure might be. But Labor is absolutely committed to the three elements of Uluru. Firstly, a constitutionally enshrined voice to the parliament. Secondly, the establishment of a Makarata commission that would have two jobs, a national process of truth-telling and, of course, um, a process to get to treaty and agreement making, which is long and complex. And will you do things in that order? Are you committed to the referendum and then the Makarata Commission? Because I know, for example, there are members of the Greens who think things should go in the opposite order. 
Uh, yes, and I think Adam Band at his address at the press club uh, a week or two ago uh, recognised that the Greens uh, need to support a voice and a referendum. The support in the community, the support in the corporate sector, the faith sector, the non-government sector is just enormous and we want to harness that support this is a national project. This will change the country and make us all proud, both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. Uh, in terms of a sequence, uh, going directly to your question, I don't know that there has to be uh, a sequence in terms of voice, then truth-telling, then treaty. I actually think that you can work on getting a referendum underway and you can establish a Makarata Commission at the same time. Linda Burney, thank you very much for your company on the program tonight. Thanks, Lee. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.